Okay. Hello everyone, welcome to another stream. Today I have the pleasure of being with phenomenal nature and conservation photographer uh, and filmmaker Aishwarya Sridhar. Aishwarya, Aishwarya, welcome. Hi, thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be a part of you. Glad, glad to have you. Um, so, um, I... Uh, just gonna jump right in I don't see anybody in the chat just yet um, but um, so I just I guess uh, we can go ahead and jump right in um, so I uh, found you through um, through YouTube um, um, a lot of um, you know you've got some amazing documentaries on there how did how did you uh, how did you get started in photography and what what made you uh, what made you decide on um, nature and conservation photography specifically? So uh, I started uh, getting into wildlife at a pretty young age. So I am part of uh, the very suburban part of Mumbai city, which is Panjel, and I grew up in a place which is very closely connected with nature. So from a very early age onwards, I realized the value of what uh, a nature is to people. And mm -hmm. I used to run behind butterflies and chase anything and everything that practically creeps, crawls, mm -hmm. walks, flies, uh, runs, ev everything. You know, I, my childhood was spent uh, doing that instead of playing video games like other city dwelling kids. And due to that unconventional childhood, probably I formed a bond with Mother Nature. And you won't believe this actually, but um, as a child, I used to take talk to plants because I had this weird thought that if I spoke to them, they're going to give better and bigger flowers, more colorful ones. So I used to like literally spend my time talking to uh, the plants in my garden. and. It was th those years probably cemented the bond and when I got a camera as my birthday gift uh, that became like my favorite toy so I used to click pictures and then share that with my friends and I realized that a lot of my friends were also interested to go out and explore these uh, jungles of India looking at my pictures mm -hmm. so I felt like if they were inspired like why not try that with a bigger community so slowly and slowly, I began uh, putting my work out there using social media, and um, that's how the whole thing started, basically. Wow. So, um, so did you did you always know you wanted photography to be a part of your love of nature, or did that did that come much later? Um, it came a little later because initially, uh, photography was uh, a hobby. And uh, my love for nature was always there. So uh, I used to like just uh, enjoy clicking pictures of what I saw on and on my various adventures. But uh, later on, I realized that uh, photography can be a very powerful tool uh, which can inspire people, which can bring about change. So then it began uh, with more uh, a serious outlook towards photography rather than just keeping it as a hobby. And slowly when I... Uh, mm began like to think about my graduation field uh, after my 12th standard, I decided to take up mass media as uh, the subject I specialized in for graduation because I felt that uh, medium, the media as a mm. field uh, is a very powerful tool that you can use to mm. connect with people and to bring about change. Yeah, and it's 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 interesting you bring that up because that is one of the things that, that I wanted to talk to you about. You know, as, as someone who also um has had a passion for nature from a very young age you know i was i was the guy too running around in the yard picking up wow. bugs and uh, and and stuff but um photography didn't come to me until my 30s okay. so um 
but conservation has always been a passion. So I wonder, um, of all the ways that there are to be involved in conservation, you know, you, you hinted on it. You, you said that m media is a powerful tool. Um, how, how so? How does that resonate with people? Um, what, what can a photograph or a video do um, that perhaps um, say, oh, I, I, rather than say, oh, I'm going to donate money to this organization? Uh, you know, how is that, how is uh, a photograph um, impact conservation more than just, say, donating some money? you can donate money and still mm -hmm. uh, be a part of the whole conservation network because you are making a difference. You're helping uh, someone else on the ground. Uh, these grassroots level organizations uh, work towards what they are passionate about and what they really care about. But uh, when you look at images, uh, they actually complement the work that these organizations are doing because uh, photographs, I feel, give voices to uh, the endangered species, they put, uh, like they kind of are a symbol of the wildlife out there. If I were to tell uh, maybe a hundred people about going uh, uh, going to say a national park in India and seeing a tiger, yes, there would be some impact. But if I was to like show them pictures of my visit and show them how the tiger, what, what did I see, they actually get to see nature through my lens my pictures and when you see something it really impacts you rather than simply reading about it or probably just uh, listening to it so visuals have that influence over people and all of us uh, we love watching films we love watching uh, you know hollywood movies we get inspired right looking at uh, say spider-man jumping buildings or seeing jurassic park and those films right have that impact and that's what I wanted to even use uh, that the similar thing with wildlife documentaries as well because um, what I believe in is that one should not uh, create uh, wildlife documentaries that only preach save uh, wildlife conserve mm. nature which shouldn't be preachy because when you get preachy people do not necessarily take it uh, that well they, they, don't, they just switch your uh, content but rather mm. than that keep it entertaining and I'm pretty sure mm. uh, the people out there would be really motivated mm. to see what you're putting out. Sure. So you you bring them in rather than you go out and 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 yeah. beg them to beg them to to do something. Hey, just off the six. Welcome into the welcome to the chat, sir. Um. So um. You know, you uh you 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 indicated you got your first camera um as a gift um. What uh, what is your gear? How does how does your gear setup look like now versus back then? Like, how did it how did it how did it uh, get to where it is now? Uh, it moved steadily. So my first uh, camera was a very basic point and shoot, <laughs> of which uh, I think was mm -hmm. of Canon or Sony. I don't know. Uh, I, so I don't remember the make the brand mm -hmm. anymore. It's a very tiny camera that I had, mm -hmm. and I it used to be my favorite. Uh, toy. I used to carry it around on all of my adventures and all trips and I used to photograph everything and the memory card used to be very limited so I had a big problem with the memory running out most of the time yeah. uh, and I still preserve some of those old photographs. It's fun to watch and see like where where all you horribly mm. went wrong. Oh, oh uh, wow. <laughs> uh, so my, I moved uh, to my first DSLR and I had a Canon 600D, uh, then that progressed to a Canon 7D, uh, then uh, today I use a Canon 5D Mark III and a Canon 1DX Mark III. Uh, so, and the lenses have also grown. So uh, initially what used to be a built-in lens with the point and shoot has now uh, moved to a very big 600mm uh, lens mm. that I use for uh, wildlife. And then mm. I, it's, it's complemented with uh, mm -hmm. other telephoto zoom lenses like 100, 400, or 1635, or macro for that matter. Okay, oh, that's... I also rent out lenses. Like if I need a particular lens for a particular shoot, then rather than buying it, I rent it out also at that. Oh, you're, you're way smarter than I am. I, I buy first and ask, uh, ask later. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, and I and I and I won't dwell on gear too much because obviously gear is not the the most important thing. But you yeah. you 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 have um you have recently become involved with the um, Canon Ambassador program uh, as an EOS influencer. Tell tell me a little about that. How did how did that happen? Uh, so it happened uh, last year, in fact. Uh, I got into the first level of the Canon. Uh, Brand Ambassador program as a Canon Explorer. Uh, okay. So you have different levels. You have mm -hmm. an Explorer, you have an Influencer, and then there's, I think, a men, uh, there's a Maestro, and then there's an Ambassador. So I was mm -hmm. in the first level, and um, that's because they really liked the work I was doing uh, with uh, my photographs. So uh, mm -hmm. I thankfully got into that uh, Ambassador program, and I've been a very loyal Canon user. So all my uh, gear from the time I started wildlife photography on a more serious basis mm -hmm. has been Canon always. So uh, recent, mm -hmm. recently after uh, my win of at the Wildlife Photographer of the Year, I got promoted to a wild or to an influencer. Oh, very very cool. Um, and uh, so you um, so you um, it's almost like you're doing my segues for me. Um, you're. Uh, so you are um you you brought up wildlife photographer of the year uh, um you are if i am not mistaken the the first indian woman to win highly commended there um that is that is amazing and i'm actually going to bring i have your photo here um that you entered i'm going to bring that up on the screen tell us about this Image is called Lights of Passion, and um, it's about fireflies under the starlit sky at Bhandardara in Maharashtra. Uh, the place is about a uh, three four hours drive from Mumbai city, and I had gone there uh, primarily to click fireflies because I read about mm -hmm. uh, their congregation in a newspaper last year, and I was mm -hmm. I want to click them, I want to click fireflies because I've seen uh, mm -hmm. these. Uh, creatures as a child and I'm someone who is a big fan of Harry Potter and all this <laughs> um, Percy Jackson that kind of otherworldly mm -hmm. um, fairy tales and those kind of books so to me fireflies are like these magical creatures who can emit their own uh, bioluminescence so I really wanted to capture that in my lens so last year was uh, a good uh, time to do that so I went over there I checked the moon calendar because I didn't want ambient light to spoil my photographs. And went there on a particular day when the moon was uh, waning and it had already set. So I'll, ha I'll have absolutely no moon in the sky at, at the night. So oh. I met there a couple of locals I met up with first because uh, these people really know which part of the forest are the fireflies mostly found in. So they told me about this one nature trail to take and I began trekking there. It was a long uh, walk and with all my equipment strapped up so that was a pretty tiring one. And fi I did see fireflies like, you know, uh, flitting here and there, uh, mm -hmm. sitting on bushes, but uh, not the numbers that I wanted. And they were like very small and I would have had to like shoot hundreds of images to even or make it up to what you see on screen right now if I had shot on the, any of those bushes. Oh, wow. So I kept walking, I kept walking, and then I chanced upon this one tree. And this was like, you, I can't describe the feeling that I got when I saw it because it was that magical. Mm -hmm. And uh, it felt like Pandora, and I'm watching uh, some Christmas or Diwali decorations strung up on a tree, and they are lighting in a synchronized manner from top to bottom and from bottom to top it goes in like a wave across the tree and you also have uh, the owl hooting at night and you have the some uh, insects calling so it was like a beautiful amalgamation of what i saw there and i was initially i was focused on more a tighter perspective of the tree or without the stars uh, and when i checked the images uh, they weren't that great uh, to be honest. So I was mm. wondering uh, what to do to kind of add that wow element to this image. And I looked up and I saw the stars and I was like, this is it. I will <laughs> merge the stars and the fireflies in one frame. So it will be as if 
stars on mm-hmm. earth and stars in the sky so that's how uh, like the fashion came into being that's very very cool uh so did you plan to shoot for the competition or no no, no that's it's it's amazing that it worked out that way just uh like a you know like a diwali out in the middle of nature right <laughs> Yeah, I, I, that's that is amazing. Um, so, getting to um, kind of what I perceived to be, uh, and we, we've kind of talked about it a little already, but um, you, you've got a real passion for for conservation, and and the way um, that I first discovered your work was through um, your your documentary on um, saving the. Panjay Wetlands. Um, s- s- um, I hope I said that correctly. Uh, um, so, um, what what got you? Um, what what uh, made you decide to focus on that in particular? And how how did this um, documentary come to be? And what what uh, resulted of it? Uh, so, um, I have been visiting Panjay uh, and Uran for that matter for mm-hmm. a long time now. It's been almost a decade and above. And I've grown up uh, watching flamingos and painted stalks feed uh, in mm-hmm. these wetlands. So it wasn't very difficult for me to see that uh, the wetlands around my house and around Uran were getting reclaimed. And today, mm-hmm. if you uh, go there on the ground, you notice that only one wetland remains, and that is Panjay. So that's close to about a thousand hectares of marshes and mangroves destroyed across mm. uh, maybe uh, eight to nine years. And so that is like huge when it comes to seeing it on the ground. And Panjay has been uh, very close. I've had some really amazing birding moments, a lifers uh, for me at Panjay. So it's all is selfishness, but I didn't want the wetlands to disappear. And when I was out there birding one day, in I think June it was, in 2018, if I'm not wrong, and I was talking to this local uh, bird guide named Parag, and uh, uh, he told me that Panjay was also going to get reclaimed, and there would be a luxury apartment uh, residential complex which is going to be built on the wetlands. And I was shocked. I felt like, why is it that, you know, every time we go ahead and destroy... Uh, nature just to gain uh, some amount some amount of uh, so-called economic progress and mm. I was wondering what to do I was brainstorming at home I came back and that's when my mother came up with this idea like you have so many videos that you have huh. taken of the bird life at Panji why don't you put toge- put them together in a documentary so the idea was great and I was also all charged mm. up about it but <laughs> Then I realized the problem because I did not know video editing and um, whatever I knew in terms of my uh, school and college years that I studied mass media was very basic. So how do you create uh, the level of animation and the level of uh, title graphics and all of that was like a real uh, a new world to me and even in terms of color grading and all these terminologies that I saw on the internet and I read about were like, mm. oh my god, what am I reading? I don't know anything. So I panicked and I, then I said, okay, let me go and ask a professional uh, video editor if he can help me out. So I checked a few guys, called them up and they told me like the price, which I had to sell probably my kidney to, <laughs> you know, <laughs> meet those demands. So I was like, no uh-huh. way, I can't afford that. Um, then mm-hmm. I decided why you know, learn it myself. I looked up at interview, uh, like in terms of tutorials on YouTube, uh, and read a lot about video editing, and then learned the process, and finally put together the film in a matter of two, three months. And then I went out, showed the film to a number of different people, NGOs, uh, the fishermen on the ground, uh, even the developmental authorities. Uh, then the whole wave began of, uh, you know, saving Panje, and it is still going on because uh, the, it's been almost two and a half years now, but uh, the wetland still stands on the brink of extinction. Mm. There is still, uh, you know, uh, the corporate uh, p- corporate entities who are wanting to turn that wetland into a real estate business. 
and uh, we're hoping to get a verdict in our favor that the wetlands will be declared a bird sanctuary. Uh, it's very close, but uh, still it can go either ways. So hoping for the best. Oh, that's yeah. It's it's it seems like it's a it's a never ending struggle. Uh, yes. You know, uh, a lot of uh, a lot of the corporations seem like they can only see money without without realizing that hey we're all in this together we all suffer when these habitats get destroyed Absolutely. but um yeah that's um but it's it's great that there are people like you out there um championing championing this um you know these 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 animals and these habitats they can't uh, they can't speak for themselves Absolutely, they can't. And, and I think that uh, filmmakers and photographers uh, give that voice to them mm. through their work. Definitely, definitely. And, and like you said earlier, seeing it, you know, bringing people in there um, really, um, really uh, just getting a little emotional. Yeah, just really, really brings you in there. Um so um what um if i'm uh so if i'm sitting at home you know i don't um uh, maybe uh you know maybe i just discovered this problem or i don't even live in the same country um and there you know and there are people in the chat right now um perhaps wondering you know okay i, I want to help how can i help um what what can they do uh, you know, talk about this on uh, their social media, their networks. They can write to the Indian government. Uh, I, that will be really helpful because um, there's, we, are, we are trying to create this into a mass movement where mm. uh, everyone out there stands up for the wetlands in Mumbai because most of the times when we talk about conservation and uh, wildlife, we only think of forests. Mm. Uh, we hardly think of wetlands or the marshes for that mm. matter. And so these are like the, uh, you know, unsung uh, place, unsung heroes of our environmental uh, habitats. And when we look at in terms of their ecological role, uh, wetlands are as important as forests. Uh, they are the hub mm. for, uh, you know, uh, sequestration of carbons and even in terms of mm. uh, climate change, they play a very important mm. role. And they are, they are disappearing three times faster than our forests. So we are, we are, we are, we'll probably like lose uh, wetlands in hmm. another 20 years, wow. much more faster than our forests. So and I think it's high time that uh, we protect these marshes as much as you know we want to protect hmm. our forests and our, our grasslands or our mountains. Oh and yeah. Our oceans. Oh yeah, I'm I'm definitely definitely with you there. Where where I live, I live in a coastal city, and we we are swampland all around us, you know. Oh wow. Um, so it's yeah, yeah, and we're and we're we're running into the same issues. People keep they want the corporations they keep wanting to fill it, um, yes. pave it over, you know, and and these these animals have nowhere to go. So um, this kind of kind of provides a, uh, a a segue into one of the other things I wanted to ask you about uh, it is knowing that it seems like a constant uphill battle what are some of the specific challenges um, conservationists and conservation uh, photographers what what are what are some challenges that that we that, that you face on a daily basis in, in doing this and trying to protect a place like uh, like, like Panjay? One, I would say, is funding uh, in terms of uh, you know, keeping your project going. Uh, and the other would definitely be uh, getting your project, your images or your documentary uh, to be seen and heard by the right people in, in case of Panjay, the government. Uh, because uh, when you look at Panjay, it's been like uh, I have had, I've had really a huge amount of uh, challenge and a struggle to get my uh, documentary to be seen by the right authorities so that they take notice of this wetland because in most in the developmental cooperation uh, mm -hmm. 
uh, mindset, they felt that the veteran does not exist. They told me on my face when I first went to them with the documentary, they told me this is some other, uh, you know, veteran that you have filmed in Gujarat, possibly, which is the next state. And that's the state which is mm. very rich in terms of veterans. Mm-hmm. They told me this is not Maharashtra, this is not Mumbai, definitely. <laughs> and so many uh, birds never have visited Mumbai in history. And I was shocked. And there was another bizarre statement that uh, the chief architect, the chief town planner made to me during our whole uh, meeting. And he told me that, you know, migration uh, is, uh, it's an annual process, no doubt, but we can actually change the path of the migratory birds. Now that is something that is uh, decided by the position and the magnetic field and the position of the moon and the sun and the stars. And the birds, you can't change the migration route that they take every year. You can't, it's not like humans, you know, you put a sign up in the sky which says take left mm. and take right here. It's mm. not done that way. Well, you mean, was, you mean they don't read? Uh, I, I, I was appalled <laughs> when he said that to me. No, he that's... said we can you know, put up uh, signs and they'll go. Mm. They, they can, we, they've changed the migration path. And I was like, can mm. you hear what you talk? No. I, Just... Give them a give them give them a traffic light something. It's not uh, done that way. No. If people don't know. Uh, neither do they bother to read research. Uh, neither do they lo- want to listen to researchers. Neither do they want to listen to the experts who are all shouting out there that please save these wetlands because they are the last remaining uh, habitats for the migratory birds. And we have really an ecological uh, wonder, I would say, because birds come to Panjshe from Siberia, from Arctic, from uh, Russia, and it can be really a big ecotourism hub. And the local uh, fishermen over there, they not only depend on Panjshe wetlands for their livelihood, but it can also be termed uh, be turned into a, a very good tourism opportunity where the locals also benefit because we can have foreign tourists and foreign tourists still come to Panje from London and I'm seeing people coming from North America who marvel at the bird life out there every winter. So turn that into an, a tourism spot and Maharashtra will mint money. Yeah, definitely. That's, that's, that is amazing. Yeah, it's, it's, it, uh, Almost makes you wonder if the the people who have the good sense to think of things like that don't don't run for office. You know, yes. uh, we have we have that same problem here in this country. Um, so, um, do you have do you have any images to show us um, from oh, yes. from there? Um, just uh, bring them bring them up, and we'll and, uh, tell us about them. <laughs> Three. Okay. Okay, let's see. Just. Okay, uh, can you all see the screen? I I can see I can see uh uh yes I can see your screen. Uh, okay, you can see the the preview, right? Or oh. Run. That's running with all my images. Um, no, I can see. I I don't know if it's a wallpaper or. A... Um, I don't. Okay, how do I? Okay, I'm sharing the screen over here, um, and it tells me what your screen is kind of. Okay. Okay. Let's okay. see here. Can you see it now? Um, I'm pulling it up. Let's see. It's um, it's taking a minute to to pull up for me. It's um, I'm getting a buffering screen. Looks like. I don't know what's happening. 
I know sometimes, like when I'm streaming um, any anything where I'm showing photos, sometimes it only captures the master window and it doesn't want to show the the photos, and I have to do. You might have to show your entire screen if there's um, you know nothing, obviously nothing private on there. Um, Checking, I, I think I've picked the right option this time and picked oh. review. Okay. Uh, so I think it should start streaming. Let's see. Uh, yeah, my internet connection is good. So there shouldn't be a problem. Yeah. It, uh. Oh, it stream is currently reduced. Hmm. Yeah, it's. I'm just getting the uh, spinning wheel here. Yeah. I don't know why is it going live. Very unusual. But it's not a Twitch stream without technical difficulties, so <laughs> no worries at all. We can um, but we can give see give that a second and see if it pulls up um. So what is um what is your post processing look like? Um what do you what do you edit in? Um and and how much editing do you do? Like how much do you do you, would you say is too much or Uh okay. So uh, I mainly use uh, Adobe Lightroom and Adobe Photoshop for my uh, image processing. So what, uh, my workflow is such that I uh, first open them up in Bridge and I kind of uh, grade my images and see which to delete, which to keep after I come back from a trip and then open the ones that I have rated the best in Adobe Lightroom first so, and I do my basic corrections over there and then bring them on to Photoshop for a little more tweaking and then that's it. Uh, I try and keep my images as natural as possible uh, because I feel that uh, when you when people can see what's naturally available to them outside uh, then that has a better impact but I'm not someone who is against um, mm. uh, you know um, image manipulation because sometimes you can use Photoshop to tweak your images and create artistic work out of it which has equal impact and it can have people go like really uh, going wow over your images so that is also something I, I have tried to do but again my Photoshop skills are not very great so when it comes to doing like really artistic work out of your images mm -hmm. and still learning that field you can say okay um well it does it doesn't look like that screen share is gonna cooperate cooperate What's with happening? us that's okay um um let's see maybe if i um is the let me try again okay Fetching the previews right now, uh, it's mm. showing me entire screen. Okay. Let me see. Okay. Okay. Let's see. So uh, I am seeing what looks like um, a wallpaper. Um. I see. I see the. Um, I Can see. You see my I cannot. I can see. Um, I can see your top bar where it says Discord, Edit, View. Okay. Uh, what about now? Still the same. The oh God. S still looks like the same. Very. Very unusual. Uh, there's some. Um, okay, one second. If I. Okay, so when I click share your screen, okay, it says applications or it says screens. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so which should I uh, select for mm. uh, streaming? 
ideally it would be just the window that you want to show so if you're just showing the finder you would just pick the finder um, but if that doesn't work if that doesn't work um, okay. sometimes you have to show your whole window um, share screen and it's showing me preview okay uh, but when I say go live, can you see it um I, I I have that I it pops up that you're sharing your screen but all it does is I get the spinning wheel <laughs> yeah so I don't know I don't know that that's gonna work now um, what I can do um, on my end, if you, um, want me to either pull up, um, your website or your Instagram, if you have any images that you want to talk about from there, or, um, oh, my Instagram is fine. It has, okay. Uh, it has good image, so. okay. Um, so bear with me here. I, already have it on my browser so I luckily we don't have to do too much looking <laughs> let's see I just have to put it in the right window that's all I don't know why my screen share is not working Oh, that's okay. It happens. Okay, so I have got your Instagram up, if you can see it. Um, uh, okay. Let's we go and click ahead. Give me... Ah, yeah. I can watch it. I can see it. Okay, give me one moment here. I think uh, my second monitor is uh, decided, to act, uh, decided to act up <laughs> on me a little bit. Okay, so here we go. Um, is there any place you want me to start in particular? Oh, let's go to the first image instead. Okay, so tell us about this. Okay, so this I clicked at Gear, uh, Gear National Park, which is the only habitat for the Asiatic lion. And uh, they're highly endangered, this big cat. And this is a lioness over here. She was part of a pride of uh, five lionesses, um, but they sadly didn't have cubs. Or at least I couldn't see any cubs uh, during my visit. This, this is long back. It's from my archives. Uh, in 2012, I mm -hmm. had gone for this uh, wonderful trip to Gale. And I, we almost saw about 25 to 30 different lions in one trip. Oh, so wow. A huge number for a big guy. Wow, that's amazing. Okay, now let's go to um, a little... It's, can you please scroll down a bit? Um, okay. Uh, the the one on the the duck, yeah. Uh. Yeah, that one. Okay, so this is a lesser whistling duck, and this is picked at Panje, and so Panje is bordered by uh, a huge uh, span of grasslands. It has a a huge amount of grasslands surrounding the wetland. And uh, you can often find these whistling ducks uh, roosting in the grassland during monsoon. So when I had gone there uh, last year, I found this whistling duck along with a couple of spot bill ducks. And they were uh, really close, so I could drive up very close to them. Because when you go on foot, um, when you go birding on foot, most of the times these <laughs> wetland birds, they get really scared and they fly off. So I like to take mm -hmm. my car uh, with me, and when you uh, when you're shooting from your vehicle, uh, you get uh, a chance to get really close to them. So that acts as an advantage. Yeah, this is an amazing image. And Stamp Stampley Photography here in the chat said he he was he wanted to see the duck. I guess he was hoping we would we would click it as we pass by it. I really I really love it. I love the it's almost a facial expression, and and I love it with that shallow depth of field. That's that's beautiful. Yeah. Right. Okay. Now let's mm. see. Um, the tiger. Okay. There she is. So 
this is a cub. Uh, it's a Sabadal cub actually. And uh, when I had this was my, from my first visit uh, to Taroba National Park, uh, which is my favorite place to go go and see tigers because in Central India, Taroba offers you a number of uh, different opportunities to see tigers and. There are so many different individuals mm -hmm. who are my personal favorites in this park. And this sub-adult uh, tigress was a uh, part of a mm -hmm. litter of four female cubs. And they were called the Talia sisters. So uh, uh -huh. this female was very close to the road. And from our gypsy, I, I had to actually completely zoom out. And I shot this at 100 mm. Because at 400, she was blurred. She was that close to me. Oh, wow. So I had to really pull back and shoot at 100. And I got her uh, at her candid best when she looked up to see me as I passed by. And and if I, um, you know, I uh, if I remember right from watching uh, watching some of your YouTube videos and other interviews that done, you, you, you seem to have a, a, a particular passion for these big cats. And... and yeah. Did I did I hear correctly that you're working on another documentary around that? Oh uh, yes, I am. Can you is is it a secret or can you can you tell us anything about it? Uh, it it's actually a secret. Oh. I, yeah. Go no, I'll, I won't I won't tell anybody. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> it's actually a secret. Oh. Uh, and um, you whoever's watching it, you can um. Follow me on Instagram, and I will be posting about it very mm. shortly. So. Okay, and um, I'm all, all I'm going to post your links here in the chat as well. Um, and anybody in the chat um, that wa wants to know any of this information, you can just type exclamation point guest here in the chat, and all of um, Ashwari's links will come up. And I will also, I will also um, post all of these links in the uh, bod and show notes post for this stream as well um you can look at oh definitely definitely uh, we can look at um look at a couple more i really love your macro work um uh, that's 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 kind of a place something close to my heart um i only have uh, i mean i'm not a not an expert i only have six macro lenses um it's yeah. it's 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 fine <laughs> I don't have a problem. Don't don't judge me. So tell <laughs> So tell tell us about tell us about this is um is this this kind of where what you started with in the garden or um uh, yeah. Kind of... I mostly got this like uh, I wanted to I my garden is big. Uh, so I uh, was discovering these weird uh, caterpillars and snails and all in my garden. So I wanted to capture them. And with a normal 100, 400 or wide angle, they weren't, uh, I, mo I wasn't able to get mm -hmm. details about these creatures. So I decided to enter the world of macro then. And mm -hmm. this is a caterpillar, it's a moth caterpillar. And mm -hmm. uh, this guy was, uh, there, were, there were about 20, 30 of them uh, feeding on my almond tree. And my, the tree was completely reduced to just a few leaves. And uh, it was about evening, late evening, so I decided to light him up with a torch and uh, get that dark background because he was this bright green and I wanted to bring that out, the striking color of his in the frame. So I decided to underexpose the shot and get mm. a really dark black background so that he stands out in the frame. Oh, that's so. Th this is with so this is lit with a hand torch, not uh, not like a speed. Oh wow, that's. That is very good lighting. Yeah, that's very good, uh, very good lighting. And I like, uh, so did you backlight this snail? Yes, uh, this snail, I uh, back, I did, I kind of, I backlit him because uh, I found that when I was initially showing the torch, uh, the lighting was okay, but uh, by chance I uh, put it as a backlight and he glowed. The snail literally glowed, the uh, mm -hmm. shell was, uh, kind of, you know, uh, transparent, you can say, which brought out that uh, semi-transparent, brought out that very lovely, beautiful glow. And that was really uh, looking very magical on the camera LCD. So I said, why not go ahead and backlight this and see what, mm. you know, uh, results I get. It's, it's clicked with that. 
It's almost almost alien like. Yeah. I have a number of images in the series. Oh wow. That's that's that is very cool. Like like I said macro is kind of right right here in my heart. So I I really uh, I, re I really love uh really love seeing that stuff. Um so we've got about uh 15 minutes um before the hour is over. Um I guess the um the last um the last thing that I wanted to ask you about um we have um a lot of communities um here in Twitch photography um that are um uh, Twitch photography is is full of br a lot of brand new photographers a lot of um a lot of teenagers um a lot of a lot of young girls especially um, more and more getting into this um, what advice would you have for them? Um, uh, for them, um, many uh, many who are just um, just starting out, just deciding what kind of photography they want to do, and m maybe some of them are thinking about um, nature and conservation photography. What 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 advice would you have for them? Uh, so um, first of all, I like to tell all of them that, uh, especially the girls out there that, uh, you know, never think that just because you're a girl, you can't do uh, wildlife photography, you can't get into adventure sports for that matter, because uh, your gender doesn't really limit you. And um, for the photography enthusiasts, keep practicing, keep clicking, because the more you read about photography, the more you listen to tutorials and YouTube videos, that's how I learned. I learned it completely from Google. So, and I'm still learning. Every single day, I still look up uh, any new techniques in photography, any new post-processing videos that come up on the channels that I subscribe. So look at those uh, things, learn. The more you practice, the more perfect you become. And when it comes to wildlife, I would also recommend you all to read about the species because when you have mm. knowledge of the subject you're clicking, then automatically you know which uh, behavior to highlight which is common, which is uncommon, and which can be that wow moment in your wildlife journey. So yeah, the more you read, the more uh, knowledgeable you get. Sure, and and and, and I can I can uh, that speaks to me. Um, given um, the type of photography that I do myself, most of my subjects are animals that are traditionally feared or hated. Um, a lot of snakes, a lot of crocodiles, a lot of spiders. And I, 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 also, I, I would add that education can replace that fear. Um, yes. And it, it, um, it helps you see the animals in a, in a new light, you know, and it, and it makes it makes you want to conserve that conserve them it makes you want to protect them right so yeah i i i'm i'm definitely glad you 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 said that regarding um education um so um right now i just want to open it up to the chat um if you have any questions um for Ashwarya, drop them in there. We've got we've got some time. We're we're doing very well on time. Um, but while you guys are thinking about that and dropping questions in the chat, um, uh, tell us real quick. Um, you you know you've gone out. You've been doing this for a while. You must have some some funny stories. Some some something cr any something crazy that's that's happened. Um, tell us about that while the while the chat is. Um, putting their questions in, in there. Oh, plenty uh, when it comes to funny stories, scary stories. Uh, so uh, in terms of funny, my car has been raided by uh, my cats. My uh, dinner has been stolen by them. Uh, I've got stuck in a quicksand pit. Uh, I oh, no. I've been chased by wild boars uh, while trying to click them. Uh, and once, uh, oh, wow. once I remember I, I was... Uh, I was really like I I was on I was flat on the ground. I was trying to get a ground angle uh, shot of the wild ass at uh, Little Run of Kutch, and a bunch of uh, wild boars decided to show up. And one of them felt I was uh, I was some weird creature lying down, and it felt like the need to chase me, so it ran behind me, and I I didn't know what to do. I picked up my gear and I literally ran at the fastest. Oh wow. 
Uh, yeah, uh, I have uh, scary encounters. I've come really close to a Russell's Viper unknowingly. And um, that was scary because I had just come back from a trip to Tadoba and I was opening the gate. And my auntie told me that there's this uh, small shoelace string that is lying uh, at the side next to a pillar. And my leg was very close to it. So she told me, how come uh, your shoelace is... Uh, you know, fallen out, uh, or did you just, or is it someone else's shoelace? I w bent down and I was like, this is no shoelace. This <laughs> is a baby Russell's wiper. Oh, no. Very scary because it was very close to me and, and I didn't know what to do. I had nothing, uh, no equipment, no snake uh, stick to handle it with. So I had to very slowly retract my feet. And uh, once I remember, I was, this was when I was very small. Uh, in my balcony, uh, I had gone out because a lot of birds were making noise. Uh, they were having giving out alarm calls, and I was about, I think, 13 at that age, at that point. So I went out and I was uh, trying to search for a snake because my mom and my dad were like, there must be a snake out, so go and see. And I was I, standing in the balcony. I'm looking down uh, at the stilt and the garden area when I didn't realize the snake was right below my leg. <laughs> it had climbed oh. into the balcony and it, it, had, uh, got, it had entwined itself in the balustrade that uh, I ha we have. And I didn't realize it was right below until the bulbul, uh, which is a bird, kept uh, flying towards the pillar and then moving away. And I looked down and I literally screamed and cried. <laughs> he was ju just... That was scary. It's just paying you a visit. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, even sometimes now, mm -hmm. uh, they still climb up to the balcony because in my house mm -hmm. a lot of creepers coming into the balcony. So they come up uh, through that. Oh, wow. So Stanfley Photography here in the chat uh, wants to know, um, do you have an animal I, uh, that you still want to photograph that you have yet to? Uh, yes, I have plenty. Uh, one is the snow leopard, uh, then we have the purple frog, uh, then I won't even shoot uh, Flick the Red Panda. They're very cute, mm. cuddly creatures, so I want to mm. uh, photograph them as well. Even the giant panda, for that matter. Oh, wow. I, I have shot red pandas. Wow. Really? Yeah. Um, no, not, um, we have, um, we have some, uh, um, some um, educational zoos here. Now, I, I'm not, I'm not the, uh, the, I'm not a big fan of zoos. Uh, only, only certain ones. Um, but we, we have one that does, um, does conservation and, and research work here. And they had, uh, they had some briefly. Um, they, they're not permanently, not permanently there. Um, but, um, P PSD Kareem asks, um, asks if you were from India. Yeah. And um, uh, Dead Eye Sunny is letting us know that red panda are found in the Kashmir region in India. Yes. Very, uh, very interesting. Dropping the facts here in the chat. I like it. Um, anybody else have any questions for uh, for Aishwarya before we let her go? And again, I will um, I will drop your links here in the chat. I just I'm just giving a couple more seconds. See if anybody has anything else last minute. Um, well, thank you so much for your time. I um, thank you. I, thank I, you so much. I I I I really um, really appreciate you doing this. Um, I know, uh, I know it is lunchtime for you, <laughs> so, um, I will, um, I will let you head out and do that, but, um, let's, um, um, oh, Michelle, uh, Michelle G. Hunter, another amazing, um, Twitch streamer, um, just, just popped in the chat. Yeah, Michelle, we're, we're just, we're just finishing up, um, but, um, speaking of, communities um with with new photographers um um with us particularly a lot of um a lot of um young girls 
um, Michelle is is a uh, an amazing mentor to them. If you have it, if you have a if you have a chance to check her out on Twitch, um, um, do 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 that. But uh, I am uh, I am going to um, let you go, chat. I'm gonna stick around for a minute after we let Ashwarya go. Um, but um, again, thank you for coming. Thank you so much, and oh. have a good have a good night. All right. It's very late for you. So. <laughs> yes. <Bye. laughs> All right. I will. Uh, I I will. Um, I hope we, hope we uh, hope we keep in touch. We can uh, we can yes, chat sure, chat some do. more chat some more about Discord. All right. Well, enjoy enjoy your lunch. Have a good rest of your day. You too. Have a good have a good night. Right. Have a lovely day tomorrow. Bye. All right. Bye, everyone. All right. Yeah, guys, that was um. That wasn't. A, that was a pretty good interview. Um. But yeah. Um appreciate everyone who came in um michelle andrew um craig deadeye kareem i appreciate you guys coming in coming in um that was only uh, only my second interview ever and um um Aishwarya was very very gracious to to uh to give us her time oh that's all right michelle i'm gonna i'm gonna link the vod um and um, if it's okay, um, since I got you here, I was gonna message you about it on Discord. If it's okay, um, I don't normally link my vods in other people's communities, but I know you know you have. Um, I think it might be uh, might be good uh, might be good for a lot of your following to to um, you know see representation um, by a by a young woman in the field um, in, in in photography. So if you don't mind me linking your vo my VOD in your Discord, I'd I'd appreciate it. Oh, thanks, Andrew. That's um, I won't lie to you. I was um, I was sweating bullets up to that point, but um, yeah, it it was a, a lot. Other than some minor technical difficulties, it was a it was a very very smooth uh, smooth process. Um, but um, I'm going to take a look real quick and see who's streaming right now. If there's anybody. Seems like this late, everybody wants to stream games. But uh, but yeah, Andrew, she she made it easy because she's she's very uh, she you can tell she's used to being interviewed. So she made it a uh, she made it a uh, real, real easy on me. Um, and we had we had time to speak beforehand. Okay, I don't see anybody. Looks like everybody I follow is streaming games. Does anybody have a recommendation of somebody to raid? I'm gonna check the team Discord. Apparently, I'm. Well, apparently Lobase is streaming right now, but we don't want to. Um, I think he's streaming a game, um, Andrew. If I remember that, if I remember right, I remember that, Dead. I I remember that is indeed how we met. I have not forgotten. Well, it looks like I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go ahead and end it because I I don't see anybody um, streaming photography other than me right now. But um, this this was great. Um, as always, I uh, appreciate everyone who came out. I will see everybody next time. <laughs>